Friday, October 26. Um, it, it requires a certain amount of warped fascination with finance to be entertained by the last week, but um, we, there's a substantial change during this week, and really just overnight. Uh, we're recording at 2.30 on Friday afternoon, and the world looked different at 2.30 yesterday afternoon than it does today. Uh, taking it one piece at a time, the stock market's adventures uh, are not enough to cause the Fed to stop doing what it's doing. In fact, they're gratifying. The Fed couldn't be more pleased. The Fed, during an overheated economy, worries not just about inflation, but worries about new bubbles, if it's too easy for too long. And so the stock market dropping 10%, which puts it back to where it was in January, is all that's happened, uh, gratifying to the Fed. There are some signs of a housing slowdown, but I'm a skeptic. I, the housing market today is so different than it's ever been because of land scarcity that uh, and also credit qualification of buyers that the, the, even if housing does soften nationally, it's not likely to have the kind of undertow effect that it has in all prior turnarounds. So, but the two pieces of softness are helpful to the Fed. Uh, but then more. Last night, uh, big tech companies, uh, in particular Amazon, uh, posted, uh, if not lousy, much weaker earnings than expected. Inflation drives bonds and mortgage rates. Earnings drive the stock market. It was one thing as of yesterday to have the stock market rolling over because it had gone up too fast. It's something else entirely to have the stock market lose ground because its crucial underpinning is losing ground. And that suggests that the economy itself may be slowing, which is just exactly what the Fed has wanted to see. Shift to the Fed. Um, the Fed, uh, the seven governors of the Fed, including the chairman and vice chair, and the 12 regional presidents of regional Federal Reserve banks, periodically speak in public. There are some nitwits um, in all lines of work, uh, the, but there are some really careful, good thinkers, and their words are in the newsletter that's posted near this video. and. The, of course, all of, the, all of the speeches last week, and there were several of them, were composed before the change in the pattern underneath the stock market um, and before today's report of third quarter gross domestic product, which on the surface was a 3.5% strong, too strong increase. But underneath, the whole thing was consumer spending and government spending. and. The best measure of the trend of GDP is called final sales, and it was up only 1.4 percent. And the much watched 2% uh, inflation target actually fell back in the third quarter to 1.6 percent. The Fed speeches, all written before that data, and but all of them made a very fine made a fine point, but a crucial one. Mr. Powell, Chairman. Uh, four to six weeks ago, led us all to believe that the Fed was engaged in a death march, that the Fed was going to continue quarter point hikes every 90 days until the economy either slowed of its own accord or the Fed would continue until it did. The, there were a couple of Fed speakers still on that path, but the majority and the vice chairman's speech all uh, either questioned the idea of a too hot economy altogether, or reinforce the idea of a pause. That the Fed has another two or three hikes to go, and then is highly likely to pause. Fed sits at 2.25 right now. Uh, the market is prepared for three as it stands. Next week, especially next Friday, we get more fresh economic data about the month of October. It's hard to believe that it's over, but it will be next week. We'll get jobs for October and other measurements of the economy in real time. If those measurements show that the economy really is in a process of flattening out, we may have seen the high of mortgage rates for the year. And I, I, it kind of feels that way. You know, don't make decisions based on short-term data, but the events of this last week have been powerful. Do have a fine weekend.